the next in my Q&A videos from my 1500 subscriber Q&A and competition video. Um, I managed to get through five people's question in the first one, probably because I blabbed too much about the structure of the video. So we'll get straight into it and I'll see if I can do uh, a few more, but we'll just see how our time goes. So the next question um, is, well questions, is actually from 2D UK. Um, Tootie's, uh, I've been subscribed from him as for about as long as he's been subscribed to me, so many, many years, um, and he goes to the car boots, and also um, currently runs YouTuber of the Month as well, so good channel to check out. So his questions were, when are you coming to the UK, and one of our gaming events? I suppose that could be one question or two, it doesn't matter. Um, now... Europe is one of the potential destinations that uh, myself and my wife would like to go to. Um, whether I get to go to a gaming event at the time will totally depend on, um, you know, when we go and what time of the year. Um, and when we're coming will depend on... I. It, 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 we've got two bunches of kids, so um, two younger kids and two older kids. Um, I have the oldest one driving now, uh, and she has been for quite some time, so she's fairly independent. I really need to get the second one driving, so we have a, a backup driver, so that while the world away, and the youngest one is nine, so you know definitely needs to be um, looked after by um, a couple of the others before we went. Um, I mean, unless we bring her with us, <laughs> and then you've got the problem of the middle. The th number three one would probably, she's not so old that she can't you know, that she could do her own thing and she's not too young that she wouldn't want to come so it makes it very expensive so really um what i'm what i'm doing is putting a little bit of money away from my um uh, retro game development and i have some frequent flyer points so, so maybe i can come over to one event or something over in europe somewhere whether it be the uk or the europe at some stage next year but i'm really going to have to wait and see and um, see how I go. So, good question. Next question is from Benji Man X, or Benji Max, or if you want to say it in one word. I was wondering if you have worked on any Sega Master System or Mega Drive games back in the day. Um, I'll, I'll answer that bit first. Uh, no, I haven't actually worked on any Master System or Mega Drive titles. Um, I can't see myself going to the Mega Drive anytime soon. I am doing a little bit of SNES development at the moment, um, but I have quite a few bit more 8-bit uh, stuff that I'd like to get out of the way first. Now the Sigma system is an 8-bit system, and it's very closely related to the MSX systems that I like as well. Um, I do know the structure of it. Um, it's just all a matter of time and focus, um, and I do believe and it's very similar to an MSX2 um, and I do have some semi-rough plans to bring out some games for the MSX2 and if I bring out an MSX2 game I will most definitely convert it across to the Master System. Uh, did you work on any of these DOS games? Um, actually no, I never have written an actual MS-DOS game um, at all, I don't think I've ever done any text adventures and things and in the early PC era, I was I, I had an Atari ST, so I did actually start some Atari ST development, um, and with the uh, and then when I and I actually started well stopped doing games and started doing business software and utilities and things like that, and then switched over to the PC. So when I switched over to the PC, it was purely um, you know business and utility software development and never games, unfortunately. It's possibly an area I would like to look at at some stage because I like making and writing games. Um, but I am quite happy to sit in the retro era for a little while longer because that's what interests me the most. Um, right, what got you into games development in the first place? Well, this harks back to, uh, I mean, my original um, system I got was a TI-99-4 and I programmed some basic things and learnt, started to learn my way around and then I got my Spectre Video 318 um, and had a couple of really nice games with it, Spectron and Armored Assault. Unfortunately Armored Assault you had to have somebody else there to play, it's a two player only game. Um, and then not much else came out. There were some cartridge games that were actually really expensive and I couldn't afford them. 
Um, I did play them in the shop where they were. Um, so I and I love playing games. And um, myself from my friends, we used to play like t uh, tabletop war games and Dungeons and Dragons games. Um, and I used to love the Atari 2600 and the Intellivision. So I started making, writing my own games so I could have games that are similar to those on my own system. So that's why a lot of the titles that I made in my early releases, um, which is the collection I released recently, um, are similar to other games. I mean, I mean, I even called one game Pitfall. <laughs> that's the thing. And I made a Space Invaders clone and I made a um, Manic Miner type game and um, I you know, wrote several text adventures and things like that as well. So. That all got me into there, so very good questions. Next one is from Alan Stewart Maimeister. Um, and uh, he does very good Friday talkies and actually puts out a lot of videos at the moment. Um, hard to keep up with everybody's videos. If you could c only keep one system, computer or console, what would it be and why? Um, if I could only keep one, it would have to be a computer uh, because I believe I would grow bored of a console. A console, yes, you can play games on it, but you can't program on it. So um, I would need one that I would um, that I could program. Um, and I'd have to go back to my, not true original, not the, the original Spectre video, but I'd have to go for an MSX machine. So I'd probably keep my MSX2 Panasonic machine, because that's my most useful and practical machine. I actually do have an MSX2 Plus uh, machine, but it's floppy drive, doesn't work, if you know what I mean. So and maybe I'd keep that one and repair the floppy drive um, and that would be the only only one I'd keep um, it's just the area that I'm most familiar with so uh, next what does your family make of your hobby um, well I'm sure like everybody else uh, they think I'm a little crazy uh, but I do live in a house full of girls so I'm the only guy so this is my little niche away from them and I don't go out much I suppose I don't have many um, friends that are on social so this is the avenue that I like. I work from home as well so the area you see over here is my home office. Um, I don't play games uh, during the day when I work but I most definitely like to sit down and play a couple of games um, at least a couple of nights a week um, and on the weekend sometimes. So um, now it depends on the person in the family how much or um, how little interest they show in my particular hobby. Uh, my wife actually doesn't mind the um, the arcade machines, um, and she used to play games with me back in the day. Like she played um, Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time and uh, Majora's Mask, and also Donkey Kong 64 and Mario 64 and the Nintendo 64. That's probably the system that she played the most with me. Um, and also when I had the uh, well, when we got the PlayStation 2. Um, she played Baldur's Gate 2 player with me as well. So she does have some interest in games, um, just more her interest is um, on the um, you know touch screen type of uh, puzzle games and things like that. Um, and obviously you know occasionally makes comments about how much space I take up and everything like that. But um, yeah, so it's it's neither here nor there. They accept it, I suppose, is the, is, is the way they put it. Uh, what is your favourite arcade game and why? Um, well, my absolute favourite, uh, at the end of the day, uh, it does come down to a couple of um, really good ones, but I suppose my absolute favourite would have to be Time Pilot, and it's the one that I've played the most um, and can get the, the highest score on. Um, I have one on the multi-board that I have in my uh, vertical arcade cabinet. Um, and it's a game that I play on a reasonably regular basis. So, and it's probably the one that I've played the most over the years. Um, so, yep, that'd have to be my number one pick. So, good questions, Alan. Uh, next questions are from Time Team 1982. What's your favourite RPG? Okay, so the favourite RPG. I mean, um, I do collect RPGs because I like the additional materials. I used to play. Uh, tabletop games and Dungeons and Dragons back in the day. Um, I have not played every RPG game that I have, though, unfortunately. So it goes to ones that I actually had time to play properly, and they would have to be the Icewind Dale series. 
uh, on the PC. Um, I played Icewind Dale the first one and Icewind Dale 2 and I started playing the Baldur's Gate ones after that but I have never actually finished them after they got too distracted with work and things so and I have a lot of RPGs here um, you know there's lots of ones on the console that I would love the time to play now next quick part of the question is what RPG would you want but is too expensive so Actually, one RPG that I would really like back in the collection, it's not as expensive as some of the other choices, would actually be Secret of Mana for the Super Nintendo. I bought a Super Nintendo when they first came out, and Secret of Mana was one of the games that I bought with it, because I liked RPGs and adventures. There was also, <coughs> um, I believe there, I was trying to think whether it was Final Fantasy or The Legend of Zelda at the time, I think it was Final Fantasy, and I liked the um, Secret of Mana more. Unfortunately, when I, that was the same time I owned my shop, and when I shut my shop down, so this is almost exactly 20 years ago, somebody took me out of my copy of Secret of Mana. And I hadn't actually had it that long, and the system, well, the main problem with the system stayed at the shop and, and wasn't at home. I bought it home after I shut the shop down, um, but obviously I didn't, then didn't have that game, so I've never been able to finish that game, and it, it irks me, but my word is it hard to get a copy of that that doesn't cost a fortune. Now, and I do know on the SNES you've got Chrono Trigger and Earthbound, another two great RPGs, and there's even the Super Mario RPG as well. So there are actually, and they're, they're, they're probably worth more, but my first choice of expensive would be Secret of Mana. And you never know, I might get lucky and come across a copy one day for a reasonable price. Um, now, text adventures. I most certainly did play text adventures. Actually, a text adventure was probably one of the very first games that I played on a computer rather than a video game console. Um, and that was called Dungeon. Um, it was, oh no, it was just called Advent. Dungeon was actually like a Dungeons and Dragons game, sorry. It was called Advent. And Advent 80 is another name it's known as. I played it on a dumb terminal on a mainframe. And I thought that was fantastic. Um, and a little bit later, I discovered Zork, the first in the Zork series, Zork 1. I actually have the um, Zork games, uh, Infogram games, text adventures, all on my iPad. And if I'm going to sit down and I know I'm going to be there for half an hour, I actually start playing one of those text adventures. So I really do like text adventures. Um, and I, that's probably why I wrote, I wrote, um, I wrote at least three. I'm just trying to think where I wrote four. Anyway, I wrote at least three text adventures myself as well. So, um, so my favourite of the text adventures. Um, so I'm struggling for the name of it. It's. I mean, I really, really enjoyed Zork. Um, uh, the one you're stuck on the spaceship. Oh, Fahrenheit. Is it Fahrenheit? Oh, I can't remember the numbers. Um, but anyway, um, the Fahrenheit ones really got really tricky puzzles. Uh, those sort of games you can get stuck in heaps. Okay, so thanks for those questions. Uh, next is Last of Avari. What was the first video game system and computer that you bought with your own money? <coughs> um, well, I actually had, I bought a computer before I bought a, um, a computer console. So the very first computer that I bought was a TI 994. Um, I used, I had, I think I paid $350 and my father paid the other $300. And that was just for a TI 994 with um, the built in basic and TI invaders. And, um, and I think a tape recorder actually came with it. And that's all I had. I was supposed to get the extended basic in the deal, but the guy shorted me on it. Um, and probably one of the reasons why I didn't stick with that machine, because the built-in basic was rather primitive. Um, it was a TL994, so it only had a chiclet keyboard, and um, it could only do uppercase characters as well. Now, as far as um, video game systems, um, now, even though I got into the Coleco, I never bought one. I bought the Coleco adapter for my Spectre Video. So that doesn't count as a console that I owned. So, And I never owned an Atari 2600. I always used to play my friends. I never owned any television. That was the next door neighbor kids. Um, so I suppose the very first one that I bought... I'm just trying to... Th 
I think this we got the SNES before I got the Mega Drive, so it would be a SNES. There you go. So I didn't didn't ever see or um, get an original Nintendo. Um, that skipped me completely. And even the um, and even the Master System. I just played the one at the shop and I that I worked at. I never actually owned one myself. They didn't pay very much back then. So. Um, what all those that you got to use? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I suppose I've sort of already covered that. Yeah, so my friend, who used to live about five kilometres away, used to bike to his place after school. He had an Atari 2600 with heaps of games. I can remember when he got Adventure. Uh, we both played that and played that and played that. Um, I mean, obviously, when I first went there, he had, had Asteroids and Space Invaders, and we used to play those all the time. Asteroids was always a game we came back to again and again. Um, and Kaboom! One of the most played games when I went around to his place was Kaboom to see how far each of us could get. And the next door neighbour kids who I used to babysit had an Intellivision. So I used to play B17 Bomber, uh, the Space Invaders game on that one, and uh, they didn't have a lot of games. They didn't have any of the Tron games. Played those later when I worked in a store. So, um, and ColecoVision. Never physically owned a ColecoVision system, but um, I played bought some of the games and played them on my Colego adapter, so I got to play those at the store that I used to work part-time at. Um, okay, so we'll keep going. We've managed to do five, but we'll, do, we'll make the video a bit longer. So, Rocky Burgeon, what's your favourite gaming franchise? Um, I'll have to think about that one for a little bit. I'd, probably it would have to be the Metal Gear Solid series um, because it has um, I, I have really good fond early memories of it and even though I haven't actually played through all of the games um, I think it's got a very strong story um, it introduced obviously the stealth element and things like that so and I keep on buying copies of Metal Gear so I must really like it it's either that or the Boulders Gate Icewind Dale series. I don't know how many copies of those I have bought over the years with the intention of starting again and playing it on holidays. Right, what it was about early personal computers that caught your attention back in the day and what has kept the passion alive all these years. Uh, well, back in high school, um, I did in um, grade, I think it was grade 9 uh, at high school. Um, I did advanced science and you had to choose a project. At the time I was a NASA and space nut, so I was going to do rocketry. And one day one of my other classmates has said to me, Oh, we should ask the teacher if we could go and play with the computer. I didn't even know the school had a computer. Um, and we asked the teacher and the teacher said yes. There were actually another two girls who went with us, and but they never came back basically. So. Uh, I went there and we started playing with it and it was just, all it was was a dumb terminal logged into the Elizabeth Computing Centre um, and I played the game Advent 80, which I've already mentioned in this video and um, a little bit, yeah, not in that, that, at that time later I played another game called Dungeon and there was a Star Trek game as well. Um, there was a manual on how to program in BASIC which I downloaded and printed out on the um, Teletype printer. Um, and by the end of grade 10, I'd actually written my own um, guide to um, to writing basic programs. Um, so that grade 9 Christmas, um, my parents bought me... Well, sorry, I, from the, uh, I started going into the Tandy stores and let you play on the TRS-80 Model 1s and Model 2s that were there. Um, and I bought the first one of their black books. I probably should have brought that out as a prop didn't think about it until then. Um, and my parents bought me the second one in the series for that Christmas. So grade 10 I'd switch my project to computers and by the end of grade 10 I'd written a manual on programming basic. Um, got a pretty good mark too, I was pleased about it. Uh, and then of course I signed up for every single computer subject I could when I went to college. By the time, you, got, you had to buy the books early, by the time I started college I'd already read all the books um, went to the college, they had three teletype terminals, so not even screens, and one VDU upstairs you know, on the, um, in the area of the floor where they taught the computer science. Um, I'd try and sneak on that as much as possible because then you could play the dungeon game. 
um, and I just devoured everything that first year, got really high marks and just kept on, it just fascinated and interest, interested me so much about how to make a computer work. Um, and in my second year we got the um, BBC Micros at the school um, and I actually, in, in that second year we had to write a major project um, I ran the BBCs out of memory um, and then ended up using the mainframe terminal again to write um, a Super Star Trek game. So, um, yeah, and I just, it just kept on going from there. I just kept on learning and getting interested in stuff. And I had to work it out all myself. I, the teachers knew virtually nothing. Um, we had books that were quite old and that weren't really specifically on the stuff we were working on most of the time. So we just had to nut it out ourselves. So, um, really good question. And, and a third question, what is your dream retro project? Um, <clears throat> I would like to write, um, and now that I'm, uh, more, you know, I've gotten used to the NES as an architecture, I would like to write a full, proper game for the original Nintendo um, possibly an RPG or maybe a big super shoot 'em up with lots of stages and levels um, or even uh, you know a game that mixed a shoot 'em up with some platforming or something. I, I'd just like to write a big singular game on the Nintendo um, and I think that would be a, yeah, a very nice thing to get into. I mean um, it has that extra interest. I mean, yes, I could do the same thing for an MSX or something like that, but MSX is what I've done and known for the last 30 years, whereas the Nintendo, because it's new to me, um, has definitely caught, and I've learnt a lot about it now, has caught my interest. Um, and you never know, now that I've looked at the SNES architecture, that might sucker me in as well. So, <laughs> we'll have to see how we go. Um, Alright, one more. Oh, this video is probably getting a bit long. So, the next one is Old School NYC Gamer, a guy that I have been subscribed to pretty much from when I started my channel. Um, and yeah, I consider him a pretty good mate as well. I asked a few questions. What was the first arcade game you ever played in an actual arcade? Um, now, it wasn't Space Invaders. Space Invaders I played at, a, at a, um, my local milk bar. And so was Donkey Kong. Um, <clears throat> so probably there was a little arcade that started up in my area um, down here. And I would say the actual first game that I played when I went in there was... I'm going to pronounce this wrong. I've never been able to pronounce it. Pleiades. Which is a... Um, it's, a it's a vertical um, shooter. Uh, you stay fairly... F uh, fixed, but it's got a couple of different stages. It's a bit like Phoenix, um, not quite as. I mean, I like it, but not quite as good as Phoenix. Uh, but it'd have to be Pleiades, I reckon, because uh, I said you did say actual arcade. Right. Next, do you still see yourself developing more advanced graphic games for like the Dreamcast and the PlayStation One in the future? Uh, my answer to that is never say never. I am eternally curious at learning how these systems work. Um, I will say for the more advanced systems you do need um, a lot more assistance. Um, I can put together graphics that look reasonably nice uh, but other people are better at graphics and I'm most definitely my biggest area that I'm you know, not good at myself is producing music and even sound effects. Although I will say, once you reach the Dreamcast and the PlayStation um, type things, you can actually use CD sound. So sound effects probably wouldn't be a problem. But music, you really want those level of systems. You really have to work in a team. Um, whereas the great thing about 8-bit development, you can still get away with um, doing most of it yourself. So never say never. As I said, I am eternally curious to learn how to program some other systems all the time. That's what drives me to keep on doing this, because uh, let's face it, this is a hobby. Um, <coughs> not exactly going to be able to um, earn enough money off retro projects to live on. Um, okay, number three. If you were to be any 8-bit gaming character, what would you be and why? Um, I'm just trying to think. 
8 bit. See, this is the thing. I'm, I didn't have an original Nintendo, so it's probably going to be more because of the Nintendo 64. Um, <clears throat> and it would be between, basically, um, Mario or Donkey Kong. And I actually do, if, you th if you think about well, the character that I choose all the time, it'd have to be Donkey Kong. And that harks more back to Donkey Kong, the arcade game as well. Um, and Donkey Kong 64 would have to be one of my favourite Nintendo 64 games as well. Um, so, yep, yeah, it'd have to be Donkey Kong. Alright, I think I have um, made this video long enough. As I said, I, I have stated I don't want to make these too long. But we did manage to get through seven people. So, <coughs> five, uh, only five person people a video. We're not going to... it's going to take far too long. So I hope you're enjoying these question and answer videos and um, I will keep on working at them, say, uh, keep on going at the rate of one a week. There is still more time at the time of making this video to enter my competition and ask more questions. I'll keep it open until the 24th of November. Alright, I'm Electric Adventures. Thank you very much to my subscribers. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.